Good afternoon. This is HorseRacingNation.com handicapper Jared Horak. We're going to recap the Preakness Stakes and then we're going to talk about uh, the, the Belmont Stakes and maybe the chances of American Pharaoh. But let's look back at the Preakness. Uh, the track, it was, it was a real mess. The, for most of the day, it, it looked like we were going to have a, a nice track and a fast track and, and, and good conditions. But right before the Preakness, it, it rained. And American Pharaoh had post one and Victor Espinoza he made no secret that he wanted to try to maybe sit a little bit off the pace and he wasn't going to send him from the rail if the track was fast because he had Dortmund to his outside and, and Mr. Z as well. But when the rains hit, uh, it, his, his strategy changed. He said he was going to go right to the front and, and I kind of sensed that. As soon as I saw that the rains hit and he was already proven on a wet track, he, he was the favorite and he had good speed if he wanted to use it and it was a smart move. You don't want to get mud kicked all over you. so. From the inside post, as soon as the, as soon as the gate sprung open, he just shot right to the front. Uh, he discouraged uh, Mr. Z. Uh, some of the others didn't really handle the footing like Firing Line, and that really wasn't a surprise. Uh, firing Line, I, I liked him in the race. I thought he had a good shot on a fast track, but as soon as the track was wet, a lot of times these Southern California horses that aren't used to wet conditions are like Firing Line, like Dortmund, and especially with Dortmund's size. Uh, the combination of things uh, really worked in American Pharaoh's favor. So he was able to, to get out there, uh, discourage the, the front runners, he strung out the field, and he was able to, to win easily. A uh, tale of verve uh, for trainer Dallas Stewart ended up getting second. Uh, he just sat back, picked up the pieces. It was a nice effort. And Dallas Stewart's really getting good at having these late runners uh, end up of doing well in, in the big races. In the Kentucky Derby, he had Golden Soul finish second a few years ago, a commanding curve finish second for him in 2014 in the Derby. And now he's had Tale of Verve. Uh, he got up to, to finish second in this race. Uh, Divining Rod, another new shooter here. He looked like he was possibly the best of the new shooters on paper. Coming off of a nice win in the Lexington Stakes, he was able to finish third. Uh, Dortmund ended up a dis ended up a disappointing fourth. As I said, the, the wet track, his, his size, he just wasn't going to run a good race uh, on, under those circumstances. Same with firing line. He broke slow from, from an outer post, never got involved. I think he stumbled a bit at the start. And Gary Stevens said basically his race was, was over at the start. And I think it was over as soon as it was a, a wet track. And then Danzig Moon, another one that came out of the Kentucky Derby. Uh, he's going to end up running in the Queen's Plate next. He's an Ontario bred. Uh, so now what are the chances of American Pharaoh winning the Triple Crown? He goes to the Belmont Stakes off of nice wins in the Kentucky Derby and then the Preakness Stakes. It's a bit, it's a bit tough to get a gauge on him uh, because he got that late start this year uh, in the Rebel Stakes. It was a wet track. He was so much the best in the controlling speed and he dominated that race. Same with the Arkansas Derby. He basically beat the same horses that he beat in the Rebel and he beat them very easily just like it looked like he would on paper. The Kentucky Derby, he really got tested. They had to really, really fight hard for the win and he won that one by a length and then he caught that wet track and, and dominated the the Preakness Stakes. So he's dominated three of the races, but I think maybe the Derby is more indicative of how much better he is than, than the rest. He won that one by a length. He's, he's a good, a very good horse, obviously. Uh, and, and, but now the Belmont Stakes is going to be his fifth race in 12 weeks. As I mentioned, he had that injury and he had that late start this year, not starting since until the Rebel. So I think Bob Baffert did a great job actually getting him ready for the Derby. It wasn't even a, a given that he was going to make the Derby given that he had that late start this year, but he got him ready for the Derby. And not only that, he won that one and then he won the Preakness. But the Belmont's much tougher. His fifth race in 12 weeks in, in the last 13 years from 2002 to 2014, only one horse exiting the Preakness Stakes actually won the Belmont Stakes and that was a Fleet Alex in 2005. Uh, since affirmed in 1978, we've had 13 horses win the Kentucky Derby and the Preakness, and none of those horses won the, the Triple Crown. And then in the last 36 years, uh, from 1979 to 2014, only five Preakness winners actually have won, won the Belmont Stakes. Risen Star in 1988, Hansel in 1991, Tapasco Cat in 1994, Point Given in 2001, and then a Fleet Alex in 2005. So you can see that it, the history certainly is against him. And he's run a lot of races in a short time, but he has a lot of talent. And at some point, every horse that wins the first two legs is not going to lose the third leg. At some point, somebody has to, to break through and, and get the job done. Maybe he's good enough, but we're going to find out. But if you're a, a better, uh, he's really not going to offer any value. And based on all those stats, I think he's worth trying to beat from a betting standpoint. But as a fan of racing, I certainly would like to see him win, win the third race and complete the Triple Crown. Uh, some of the horses that he is going to be facing in the Belmont Stakes 
The Kentucky Derby fourth place finisher frosted. He just missed third in the Derby. He was compromised by the pace that day. He ran a decent race to finish fourth though. He won the Grade One Wood Memorial prior to the Kentucky Derby. He worked out on May 22nd uh, in company with Tamar Kuz, that was the, the Godolphin Mile winner, and, and that one is pointing to the Met Mile next. And they worked in company today. Um, they they, uh, they um, actually frosted had five, five furlongs and 101.45. Uh, Kerry McLaughlin didn't want to go too fast because in his prior work, he had a bullet work, and they don't want to use him up, obviously, before the Belmont Stakes. So he's expected to work again on May 29th, and Kerry McLaughlin would like to see him work in 48 and change. So he, he has a plan, he doesn't want him to work too fast, just want to get, get him fit and get him to the race in, in good shape. And, and Kerry McLaughlin has trained a Belmont Stakes winner in the past. In 2006, uh, he, he, sired, uh, he, he settled a uh, Jazzle to win uh, the Belmont Stakes. Uh, Todd Pletcher has numerous possibilities for the Belmont, and, and, and uh, on May 22nd, uh, his horses worked out a lot of them in company. Carpe Diem with John Velasquez aboard worked in company uh, with the Peter Pan winner made from Lucky. Uh, they went in 59 and 1, basically uh, finished up pretty evenly. Uh, materiality, uh, the Florida Derby winner, he was a troubled sixth in the Kentucky Derby. Uh, he worked in company with Stanford. Uh, they went one a minute and, 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 and change. That wasn't a bad, a bad workout either. Uh, John Velasquez was aboard materiality. So John Velasquez he worked materiality and carpe diem. He rode carpe diem in the Kentucky Derby. Uh, the reason that he chose him in the Kentucky Derby over materiality was the experience factor. A carpe diem had more experience and he wanted to go that way. I'm not sure which horse he's gonna ride, but, but both uh, but carpe diem and materiality both have class and seem like logical contenders in the Belmont Stakes. For trainer Mark C Cassie, Conquest Curlinate worked out for him. Five furlongs in 59 and four. He was second in the Peter Pan, second in the Illinois Derby. His sire Curlin, uh, he, he's bred to, to go pretty far and, and I think that he could be one at least for exotics purposes in this early stage that you might want to at least consider throwing in your tickets uh, in, in the Belmont Stakes. Moob Tahij, uh, your UAE Derby winner, um, and he's, he's, he ran in the Derby, he ran in the Kentucky Derby and, and he, didn't, uh, he didn't really threaten uh, but they decided to stay here. Maybe the, the Belmont Stakes will be better for him. Uh, that longer distance, he's certainly bred to run all day. Uh, he, he worked a, a five furlong turf bullet, uh, actually in company with Umgayo, and Umgayo is gonna run either in the Manhattan or the Belmont Gold Cup, and he's a turf horse. Uh, Muktahij is not a turf horse, so that's a good sign that, that Muktahij works so well on the turf surface, a 101 and change, as I said, in company with Umgayo, and he got the bullet work uh, for that one. Some others pointing to the Belmont Stakes. Framento for trainer Nick Zito. He was 11th in the Kentucky Derby, uh, but Nick Zito has won the, the Belmont Stakes a couple times, and he spoiled triple crown bids as well uh, with Birdstone and then uh, Datara. So he, he spoiled it for Smarty Jones and, and, um, and Big Brown as well. Uh, some others pointing to the Derby, um, to the Belmont Stakes. Uh, Keen Ice, he was seventh in the Kentucky Derby. He's a late runner, and typically in the Belmont, you want a horse that's a little more forwardly placed because the late runners are at a disadvantage because it's really tough to sustain your run for a mile and a half. They just seem to flatten out and, and the, the horses get such an advantage on them, the horses that are in the front, that they have to work really hard to catch up to those front runners and then they, they flatten out and they just don't have that stamina to keep that run going for such a, a, a long race. Now, if you go over to horseracingnation.com, uh, you can find all the latest Belmont Stakes news, uh, videos, uh, pictures, etc. So go over to horseracingnation.com for all of your Belmont Stakes news. That'll wrap up this week's video. I'll, I'll come back next week and I'll have a video race of the week of one of the stakes races from around the country. Until then, good luck at the races.